All right, guys, welcome back to the Counter Eye Training Center. Um, we're almost done with our remodel. We'll be giving you guys a good tour after we get everything completely finished up. But for today, we're gonna be doing us a nice little wood look here. You guys may have seen the video that we did. Uh, we did a tabletop uh, with one of our franchisees not too long ago that we posted on YouTube. This one, we're gonna make just a little bit more detailed and just show you the ways. So here we go. So for this one, we're gonna start out with our walnut liquid pigment. It's a good color anytime you're wanting to go with your natural kind of wood tones. It's a good color to start with. I definitely, anytime I'm doing a wood pattern, I want to be pretty linear. They don't have to be perfectly straight, but you want to be pretty straight. We're going to use quite a bit of this walnut. We want a little bit of this color everywhere. Don't have to have these big heavy lines everywhere. But after we get that done, we're just gonna take, drizzle us a little bit more. We want this color to be pretty prominent throughout the entire piece. We don't have to be perfect with how we're adding this color. That's the beautiful thing. About epoxy, people ask me all the time, they're like, well, I'm not very artistic. I don't think I could do that. The way that we teach here at Counterintelligence, the techniques that we teach, anybody can do them. Um, we teach you how to make some money. Uh, so we're not gonna give you techniques that require timing. We're not gonna give you techniques that require you to use heat guns and, and things of that nature. We're just showing you how to make something look really, really nice and expensive and then go cash a check. So with the black, I'm gonna be a little bit more sparing. I still want a decent amount of this, and I want these spots to be decently heavy, but not near as heavy as the walnut. The black just adds a lot of depth to pretty much anything that you do in a marble or a wood technique. Having a little bit of black is never a bad thing. Um, you just, depending on colors, especially if you have white in there, you gotta be a little bit sparing with the black because it will, it will spread and go a mile. But with these colors we're using here today, a little bit of black is just gonna be just what the doctor ordered to make this thing look really nice and rich, which is what we're always going for. I always want our customers to be like, man, it looks like a real piece of wood or a real piece of marble. That's always what we're gunning for. Okay, so now we're going to come in with some of our brass knuckles metallic. It's a very coppery color. We have several colors in the copper family. This one is about the color of a shiny new penny. Uh, it's, it's a pretty nice color. We're going to kind of do the same thing that we did with the walnut, but I don't have quite as much epoxy mixed up with this color that I did the walnut and that was on purpose. You see I poured that one a little bit crooked and I did it on purpose. Just going to help give us a little variation when we start spreading this product out. Okay. We want to make sure we use all of that color. So I mixed up about four ounces per square foot. We only need three ounces per square foot with this technique, but I always like to have a little bit extra. I don't like to necessarily use every drop of every color that I had. I, I just kind of have my eyes set on exactly what I'm going for. So once I have enough of each color down on the board, I kind of like to leave it alone. So now we're gonna start by using the flat part of our fingers. We're not gonna make a comb, we're not gonna use our palm, we're gonna use the flat part of our fingers. And we're gonna spread this out in a linear fashion. We're gonna make a couple of swipes. And that's just gonna kinda get this thing moving in the direction that we want it to go as far as the grain is concerned. And you don't have to go all the way across and in fact, I actually recommend that you don't go all the way across with every swipe. Those stops and starts when we're done are gonna help this look more authentic. And you don't wanna be perfectly straight with your hand as you go back and forth. 
you want it to vary just a little bit. A perfectly straight is just going to make something look not real. You know, there's never been a, a piece of wood to have a perfectly straight grain to it. You always have some type of variation, no matter what. So we're just always trying to keep things looking as natural as we possibly can. There's a little bit of product out there, a little dry. The outside is out there. Okay, look for any dry spots as you've started doing your spreading your epoxy out. Pick up a little bit out of your tray. If you have a tray, if you don't have a tray, you can pick it up off your plastic as long as your plastic is clean. You don't want to be introducing a bunch of debris into your epoxy. It's going to make your life very difficult if you do that. Okay. So one thing we're going to do today that we didn't do on the last video that we did with the wood is we're going to add some spray paint to this one as well. So you kind of have a choice and I highly recommend you just do a couple samples, do them each way. You can add the spray paint prior to running your fingers through it like a comb to create a tighter wood grain. You can add paint prior to putting the isopropyl in. It just kind of depends on what, what you want to do. We definitely like to spray our isopropyl before we comb it with our fingers. That's going to give us the most realistic wood grain that we can get with our fingers. So it's just kind of up to you what your preference is on how you like the effect. So I'm going to show you a little bit of spray paint prior to running our fingers through and a little bit of spray paint after we run our fingers through. It might make the piece not quite look as good because it's not uniform, but it might like it even better. But it'll just show you the difference on what the white's going to look like depending on when you do it. So I'm gonna kinda cover an area on this first half of the board closer to me. And then the half of the board is more closer to the camera. We'll do after we do the other stuff, just so you can see the difference. And you can put as much or as little of this in there as you want to. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm just gonna lay my stick down. I can reuse that here in a minute. We're gonna spray this guy with some isopropyl. This is 91% isopropyl, like we usually use. Okay, we wanna spray this prior to trying to create our wood grain because we don't wanna have all these circles over top of the grain that we create with our wood grain. Okay, so it's ideal to let this sit for just a minute, but it's not going to make that much difference just for time's sake. We're going to go ahead and, and roll on. I personally like to start further away from me when I start doing this. You're going to make a comb with your fingers. Uh, it doesn't really matter exactly how you hold your hand. You just you want it to vary a little bit. We're using very light pressure. I usually make a couple of swipes. Through each area. And this is just going to help us create our wood grain. Again, you don't want to be perfectly straight. You, you want to give it some variation. Uh, and you don't want to get too patterned into variation. I know that might sound kind of weird, but you don't want to create the exact same shape on every single pass. Or it will look kind of funky on you when it's done. So now, You'll be able to tell if Chris can get us a, a close-up after we run our fingers through when we hit this white paint. It's going to look like we buried it, but then it's going to float back up in between the uh, passes of where each one of my fingers is made. You can also do this with a stick or a trowel, but it's way faster and way easier to just use your fingers. 
The one thing with your fingers that you need to be careful of is you don't create arcs. You, you don't want to create a, a bunch of arcs across your pattern. A lot of people, when they use their, their fingers, they want to plant that elbow on their side and they're, they're creating a lot of arcs. You kind of want to have a chicken wing, try to make sure you're controlling the design that you have. So right now, you can see that our, our white is very subtle now. It may have looked like it was really crazy and really heavy prior to putting that down. But once we bury it, it's now only coming up between the epoxy because it got pushed down. Even though the paint floats, it's coming up in the areas between where my fingers went. So it looks much tighter. It's not gonna spread out as much. We're gonna add some paint on this half of the board after we've run our fingers through. And uh, I think maybe I might need to explain to you why I sprayed this with isopropyl prior to running my fingers through to create this grain is because if I spray it afterwards, after I've run my fingers through, it's going to create a lot of circles. And we don't necessarily want circles in our wood pattern. That's more of a marble look. Now, with that being said, there's certain wood tones and certain things that it would look really good if you did it afterwards. But for the most part, when you're trying to do a wood grain, you would prefer to spray it prior to running your fingers through just so it stays looking more like wood. So that's the reason behind that. So adding your paint after we've run our fingers through, you're gonna wanna be a little bit more sparing. You notice I just kinda nonchalantly put a bunch of white paint in there and now it's very sparse running through. So I'm gonna be much more controlled with it now. And you definitely want to kind of look at the grain that you've created and try to find some spots and kind of follow the path of the grain that you have started. Um, when you're gonna add it, you know, it doesn't matter what color you do. We just kind of want to So this spot right here is gonna be a little bit heavy. This is what I was talking about, how we wanna be more sparing. I got a little bit heavy, so now I'm gonna have a little bit more work to do to try to get that to blend in and look right. Whereas if I can keep it a little bit tighter and a little bit less paint on the board, it's just easier for me as the artist to get it to blend in and look right. So now I'm gonna wipe off any excess paint that I have on my stick. And now I'm going to start working these in, trying to keep a very similar pattern to what I have going in the grain already. You know, I just, just want to try to spread it out and make it look as natural as I possibly can inside of this grain that's already created. Now you'll see me move kind of fast with the stick, but you don't have to move real fast with this stick. Uh, I've noticed in the training classes that we do here, when we're teaching people how to make a living doing their epoxy work, the, f the first few boards that they get on to work on as samples, I notice that they're really trying to move real fast with the stick. So I, I've purposely tried to kind of slow myself down because I just don't want people to think that you have to move super hyper fast with the stick to get the effect. You don't have to. It's just after doing this for so long, it just kind of becomes second nature and you just book and cook right through it. But for training purposes, I really just want everybody to understand that you don't have to move real fast with the stick. You just have to make the appropriate amount of passes through there so you get it to look like what you're going for. So Chris, if you can come in here close, you can see in the grain I have this area that kind of looks like a knot right here. So I kind of went around and followed that with an outline with that white. So you may or may not like the white. It really doesn't matter, you know, if you like the white or not. You could do any color that you want. It's just the white's going to pop really hard on these videos. And you do see a lot of white coming up in, in different wood pieces. So another thing you can do to, to jazz these up quite a bit is to pick a color, a very contrasting color. This is our Cambridge Blue. You can pick just about any color that you want. You could put a green in here. You could put, um, I don't know, you could, you could put just about anything that you want in here. 
We're gonna use just a little bit of Cambridge Blue. And again, I'm gonna look for some spots that kinda have a little pocket where I feel like I can add a little bit and just make it kinda blend in with the grain that's already there. Right, so there's one. This is really straight right here, but that's okay. It'll still look pretty cool. Something a little bit different. Okay, you can do as little or as much of this as you want to. It's completely up to the artist and the customer as to how much or any of this accent color that they want. You know, they, they may hate this look but it is a cool way to just add a little bit more detail to any piece. Again, I'm just trying to follow, because I'm not doing any more isopropyl or anything like that on this piece, I'm just kind of trying to follow the wood pattern that's already there. Just so it looks like it fits. I'm gonna go one more here in the middle. You know, this one, my main focal point was this area here, but the way that this line came down, I just went ahead and carried just the residue that was on my stick and it just made a really faint line back down here and just followed that, that grain. Just gonna make it look really cool when it's done. Uh, here, I'm gonna make this one a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger. I need to make sure that some of this looks a little bit crazy. Sorry about the noise back there. We're still under construction here for our remodel of the training center, but I think you guys are gonna like it. And uh, we'll be bringing you a video of that pretty soon. So all of you that are thinking about a, a franchise, you're gonna get to see exactly where you would be coming for training and exactly how that would work out. Balance this out with just another small spot up here. I don't want to go too crazy. I just feel like I need to get a little bit of this color up this way. And again, this is one of those things that you just need to look at and just when it looks right to you, you stop. You know, like I said, there's no right or wrong amount to put in. It's just personal preference. So if you're dealing with your customer, if they like a lot of this, then maybe you know you need to make sure with them do they like big spots or do they like small spots do they want a few spots or a lot of spots uh, just make sure that you cover those details with your customers prior to making the countertops just to make sure that you always have a happy customer at the end of the day all right so you may have seen in some of our videos where we have a third step um, to the wood look that you can do and if you wanted to soften this up, you could still do that look. For this one, we're not going to because we want our white and our blue spots to stay really sharp. Uh, so we're not gonna take the Bondo blade back through to soften up the grain. We're gonna leave this one the way it is. And then once this dries and cures, I'll have Chris come back in and get another aerial shot so you can see the difference in the white on this half of the board versus the white on that half of the board. And I think most people are gonna see that they like the spray paint after the isopropyl and after the combing, but there's gonna be a few instances where you might like, like it prior. So as far as this one goes, that's pretty much it. Now just make sure if you're doing a countertop, not just a sample, that you're babysitting your edges. If you've been through training, you know the exact techniques that it takes to make your edges look good every time. So we'll catch you guys on the next one.